Welcome back to the Ask Jared Show. My name is Jared. This is episode seven. Rent versus buy is renting right for me. Well, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money, but I'm going to give you some math and some scenarios and I'll let you decide for yourself. You know, 60% of people in the United States have the ability to buy a home. That's a pretty big number and choose not to. Now, I don't know why, um, but I do believe that a large portion of that 60% is just lack of education on how to buy a home. And that's what we're trying to fix here with my, with my YouTube channel is I'm trying to help people see that it's not as difficult as they might think it is. All right, I'm going to give you two scenarios, try to make this as simple as I can. When people come to me and say, hey, Jared, I think we might wait until interest goes down. So we're going to cover you know, the answers to that question. Is it wise to wait? Are you going to save money? Is that what you should do? Well, let's take a $300,000 loan. At 4.5% interest, you're going to pay about $250,000 in interest. At 5%, you're going to pay about $280,000 in interest. All right? So stay with me. $30,000 more for a half a percent. Now, rates don't move that fast. They don't jump down a half a percent. They move in eights maybe a quarter if there's some big stock market change or something like that. But most of the time they move a little bit slower than that. So let's just say it took six months for it to move to the rate you wanted to and you decided to pull the trigger. At that same time you're living in the same kind of house and you're spending two thousand a month for rent. So it's twelve grand if you waited six months. And the difference in the savings on the rate change is thirty thousand. So you say, well that's more Jared. 30 grand is more than 15,000. You're right, it is. I know how to do math too. But the home appreciated in that six months. The tax savings you got was a plus to your side. The rent didn't go up at all. You lost every single dime and you were not able to write off any. Let's jump ahead three years. Some people wait a long time. They're waiting for some something to happen and it was it worth the wait yeah you know I don't like to do anything quick I don't like to pull the trigger because you know being slow and easy is the right thing to do and sometimes it is most of the time it is but sometimes it can cost you so let's jump ahead three years this is a shocking number because we've all lived in our homes for many more years than three and you may have been renting for the last three at that two grand a month it's seventy two thousand dollars Nobody wants to hear that. It kind of just makes me sick to my stomach just saying it out loud. So, 72 grand, can you recover that at a lesser rate? I don't believe that you can. You can do the math yourself. I've done it, and it would take an incredible rate and a big down payment on a $300,000 house to recover the 72,000 that you lost while you waited. So, there's the numbers that you can use. You go to bankrate.com, use the mortgage amortization calculators, and you can figure this out yourself. It's pretty simple. You can change the rate, put in the amount, and figure out if waiting is worth it. I don't personally believe that it is. I think that it's uh, um, a waste of money to rent because you don't get any of it back. But what else do you get from buying instead of renting? Here's one of the big ones that no one ever talks about, pets. In America, we all love pets. Everybody's got a dog or a cat, chickens, goats, cows, whatever. When you rent, very rarely can you have dogs and cats. Most people don't want animals in their rentals. So that's a big thing to be able to bring an animal. An animal is part of your family. And, and people, once they own dogs and cats and live in their own home, they continue to do that throughout the life of the home. That's part of the home ownership, that's part of feeling at home is to be at home with your pets. I've already talked about appreciation, but I'm gonna just go over it really quick again. If you live in middle America and your, your uh, housing market isn't crazy like it is on the West Coast and you're just making three to 4% a year, well, you're making nine to $12,000 a year off a $300,000 house. That's a lot of money. That's enough money to put your kids through college, to buy your 16-year-old a car. Uh, you can refinance if the rates go down. And what if the rates go way up? What happens if you're, they go up to 8% and you're still back at 4.5% and, and you had a problem with 4.5% when it was 4.5%? Well, you're going to feel like a champion then because everybody else, all the other suckers are paying 8%. So really, when you buy in, with rates, isn't nearly as important as just getting into the market and start building wealth with your home. 
you're making money off that house. It, they, they historically just continue to go up. Can you buy a house what it was worth in 1970? No, you couldn't buy a house. A $300,000 house now in 1970 was $60,000, $50,000. We can't go back in time, and once that time has passed, there's nothing you can do to get it back. Another thing you can do when you own a house is choose whatever color. If you want to paint your house bright pink and annoy the neighbors, guess what? You get to do it. And here's another big thing that somebody told me a long time ago that really resonated with me. It is a forced savings account. You are forced to save money because every dime that you spend on your house payment is putting a little in the bank. That bank being your home. And not everybody are good money savers. Not everybody's a good money saver. Not People don't normally want to save any money. And if you're not good at it, this is an awesome way to force yourself to save money. 15 years into owning a $300,000 house, you have enough equity to do a lot of things with. You can take vacations, buy other properties, send your kids to school, pay off your bills. I mean, it's a big deal to own a home and to continually make your payments for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It's a, it's, it's an incredible feeling to own something and have that much equity to be able to have that much freedom. So that's my rent versus buy spiel. Um, of course, it's a little more complicated than what I just went over for the last couple minutes, but you can always reach out to me. Um, if you have questions, if you want me to do the math for you on a certain price of a house that you're looking at and the rate difference, I would, I would love to be able to do that for you. So thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe so that I know that people are paying attention and watching. If you need, uh, if you have a family member or friends that need to see this, that you've just been trying to talk into buy a house and they think that renting is better and you know that it's not for them, please show them the video. Um, let people know. Uh, that there's there's options for them to be able to buy. So that's it. We'll see you next time. Please subscribe and we're out of here.